Hello. Um, so I wanted to make a quick follow-up to my previous video about uh, the transformer encoder layer for time series forecasting. Um, someone in the comments uh, brought up a really good point, which is uh, a lot of literature uses the 1D convolutional layer uh, for input embedding rather than a linear layer. And I put his name up in the corner here to thank him because it was a really great conversation and I learned a lot. Um, and uh, we got to both kind of chatting about why this makes more sense. And uh, I just wanted to share some of my thinking um, regarding that because I thought it was really interesting. And so I, um, I put the papers he sent me up on the screen here. Um, and I, I've checked them out briefly. They're very interesting, but uh, they're two great examples for where this is used um, in place of a linear layer for embedding in, in the real world. And so just to recap what, uh, what I used in the previous video, um, to perform my input embedding, I was using this linear layer with an input dimension of one and an output dimension of our desired embedding size. And so how this works is it would loop over every individual element of every observation in our data set, and it would construct uh, embeddings from them individually, and then upon training, it would it would l try to learn the best embeddings, but the focus was on each individual element. And so it wouldn't matter if, for example, 0 0.11 was on an upward slope or a downward slope, it would have the same embedding in both cases. And so this makes a little bit less sense uh, than it would in natural language processing, where the embeddings are word specific and uh, two words embeddings would be more similar if the words are more similar. Um, and so it was this uh, point that um, that user highlighted to me and why I decided to take a second look at this. And so as an alternative, if we use this Conv1D layer uh, that as suggested by uh, this literature, um, you have something a little bit more interesting. You're taking into account uh, the neighboring elements of, of your time series. And so your embeddings are a little bit more intelligent with respect to, um, to each individual element's trajectory. And if you pad to the left, uh, then the element that you're embedding will be the rightmost element out of the window of your convolution. And if you just define the padding to be uh, the size of your convolution kernel minus one, uh, you end up with the exact same dimensionality as you would with the linear layer. You'd have your batch size, um, your sequence size, and your embedding dimension as the three dimensions coming out of this process and so i thought this was really interesting um this was a foreign idea to me because i i haven't done a lot with the uh with the transformers for time series in the past and so um i'm very thankful for that user to bring for bringing this up in the comments and uh, i know this is a very small channel but if anyone else has a comment i always love to learn new things uh please please let me know and uh thank you very much for listening